So I'll start off by talking about Argentine ants. Mention that if you see one, you're likely to see others. Then cockroaches. Focus on German cockroaches. House mice. They are curious creatures. And Norway rats. They're cautious. OK, then. Oh, my class is here. I got to go. When pests run around your school, you've got a problem. Pests can carry disease and cause health problems. And since kids spend a lot of time at school, it's important to keep their school environment safe and healthy. For us, that means reducing the number of pests and reducing the need for pesticides as much as possible. So how do we achieve both goals? Through IPM. That's short for Integrated Pest Management, and it's the preferred method of managing pests in schools. You focus on keeping pests out of your school by making it unattractive to them. Then, manage pests using non-chemical practices. Pesticides only come into play after careful monitoring shows you that acceptable level of pests have been exceeded and non-chemical methods have failed. Perfect. We're environmental scientists with the California Department of Pesticide Regulation. Our video series will teach you about using IPM at schools so that you can deal with pests in a simple, effective way that makes sense. This series is broken up into 10 short films, so it's easy to watch. I'll be your host. And if you need more guidance, we have a website full of resources and information. Oh, Whoa. so that's where that went. I'll meet you outside as soon as I get the situation under control. And I'll tell you why IPM will make your job easier. Oh. Integrated pest management. That's an intimidating phrase, but it stands for something really simple. A common sense approach to dealing with pests. The idea is to prevent pests from getting a foothold in a place where we don't want them. And if pests are found, we use non-chemical methods and reduced risk pesticides to manage them. Let's face it, students need a pest-free environment to study in, and staff have a right to a healthy workplace. That's why this good idea is also the law in California. The Healthy Schools Act, HSA. The HSA gives parents and staff the right to know what pesticides are being used in their schools. That means parents and staff must be notified, warning signs need to be posted, and the school has to keep records when certain pesticides are applied. To ensure that these requirements are met, an IPM coordinator must be chosen, and the Department of Pesticide Regulation provides integrated pest management training and resources to school staff and administrators like you to make your job easier. We'll talk more about the California Healthy Schools Act in another video, but let's focus on keeping your school pest-free and healthy through IPM. And remember, we're aiming for long-term solutions here instead of short-term fixes. Chances are your staff is already doing IPM in their normal routine, and that's good. Pesticides cost money, not only for the chemical and treatment services, but also for the time it takes school employees to receive annual safety training. Then there's the storing and transporting the pesticides, the protective clothing, and equipment you must have available, and tons of paperwork to fill out. So if a mouse trap can save you from paperwork, what's not to like? Let's talk about the health of your kids. Yeah, the students at your school. Pound for pound, they eat, drink, and breathe more than adults. Children may be more vulnerable to pesticides they are exposed to. On the other hand, you can't just have pests running around your school. Pests can carry disease and can cause health problems like asthma. And gopher holes in your athletic field can cause sprained ankles or worse. So, IPM is key to managing pests. It's important for every school to have a written policy, a formal program that lets the public know how your school is managing pests. A written policy also lets the staff know what their roles are when a pest problem occurs. It allows the school to be consistent with IPM even with staff turnover. It makes the public feel more comfortable that their children and the school environment are being protected. And you've got something to brag about. Show that IPM is a priority in your school and be proud of the fact that your school is doing the right thing for the kids, for the environment, and for the community. A successful school IPM program is a team effort, so get everyone communicating and involved, including superintendents and school administrators, the IPM coordinator, kitchen staff, maintenance and operations staff, contracted pest management businesses, teachers, students, parents, and the school board. Yes, it takes a village, but the results are worth it. IPM can ultimately result in fewer pests and less pesticides used, and I think that should get an A. 
To get an A+, be sure to watch the other videos in this series.